What's good? Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex. I'm your host, as always. This podcast is for uh, professionals, those who are aspiring, those who are developing themselves, who are consciously making an effort to infiltrate corporate and promote themselves from within. (laughs) Uh, Today's episode uh, is sponsored by Knives and Guns. Uh, fucking <laughs> knives and guns, bullets, and magazines. Yeah, go out and get you some. Anyways, uh, gonna give out a little bit of Reddit advice. Gonna start the clock. Gonna make this a 30 minute free consultation. As always, if you're interested in a personal consultation, something career, something professional related, we do career consulting, professional consulting, and uh, that does come with additional services in the form of legal transactional if you require that kind of assistance by all means seek us out and ye shall find some professional opinions now this one's coming from r slash career guidance and these folks are asking a particular a a peculiar question a peculiar question what they want to know and they're asking that question soliciting advice on reddit and while it's smart it's It is beneficial to go to Reddit because of the large audience and the number of potential contributors. You also get the potential, the propensity for trolls to just come onto the post. But typically, these forums, these Reddits, subreddits, yeah, these subreddits that are tailored toward uh, professional and career development, they don't tend, they tend to attract less trolls than one might expect. And I think it's because business nowadays, or business still commands respect. Uh, those avenues that uh, that go towards making money, facilitating business, a little bit of exchange of value, facilitating uh, business interaction, that still commands respect, as it should, I think. It's been said, and I've said, as somebody once told me, that if you take care of business, business will take care of you. And business is always personal. So these folks are on r slash career guidance asking, what is the best job for work-life balance? Good question. The body reads as such. I don't want to be passionate about my job. What? Man, you start off with that sentence, you're already fucking me up. But let's continue. I'll read the entire thing. I'll provide a little bit of commentary. I will give my opinion just based off of what's been left for us here. Uh, Typically, and and I say this a bunch, sooner or later, I'm hoping that that these episodes will reach the right people so that if they ever do come to Reddit and... They want to solicit free advice and potentially have their questions end up on the podcast that they give us more context because uh, the bodies of a lot of these posts don't provide us with much to go on. Still, I can give some general advice, uh, just, yeah, just a general opinion, some type of approach, but it is case dependent. From case to case, circumstantial. It's all circumstantial because it's dependent on one's life circumstances. I'm not going to go too deep into that. I feel like most of the audience is smart enough to understand. A great majority of the audience is smart enough to understand that the that that no advice is uh, is blanket. No advice is widely. No specific advice is widely applicable. I mean, there is some general advice, which I think goes towards making a competent professional, a corporate cowboy in their field, in their practice. Uh, But if they're asking for specific advice, yeah, I mean, we're going to need facts, a lot of facts and a one-on-one, a private consultation. That's typically what I do. There is a lot of interviewing. There is some back and forth. And then I finally give advice. Or we finally give advice. But you come to me personally, you're going to get it from me. 
So they say, I don't want to be passionate about my job. How odd. I just want a job where I can go to work to get the bills paid and have my professional and private life be completely separate. So this person wants to live a double life, I guess. I don't want to take my work home with me. I am a highly empathetic person, but don't want to use my empathy skills in my professional life anymore and would rather I save it for my personal life. I just want to have a dispassionate, boring, repetitive job with no more last minute changes and where I no longer have to form connections and build rapport. Man, this sounds like a fucking nightmare post, but I'm only halfway through it. Maybe there's some saving grace. (laughs) They say, I am a teacher and this is all currently impossible. Okie dokie then, that explains it. I can't deal with the constant chaos of a school environment anymore and genuinely prefer when I used to be a cashier due to the repetitive nature, predictability of my days, and limited social interaction per person. I also have chronic pain and being on my feet all day is terrible for it. So I'm looking for a job where I can be in one place all day and doesn't require a lot of walking. I also can't do nothing. Wait, what? I also can't. I also can't do a nothing that requires. Yeah, I also can't do anything. I'm assuming. I also can't do anything that requires an undergraduate degree in STEM. So this person doesn't want to think that hard either. <laughs> what is the best career slash job for me? And does what I want exist? Yeah. It's called being a cashier. (laughs) It's called being a cashier. Now, notice how this person doesn't leave their age, their sex, their location, their their past experience uh, as far as educational or professional, right? Uh, Have they always been a teacher? One has to ask. Have they always been in the teaching profession? Do they have experience in other fields? Was teaching just something they jumped into for the money? Because at the time, maybe it was more profitable. At the time, it provided more benefit to uh, whatever situation they had going on. And now they want to exit. It's like this motherfucker forgot how to write a resume, how to polish up the resume and start looking for jobs, right? start applying for jobs. Uh, I think to a degree, if they don't want to do STEM, because a lot of STEM deals with, um, can deal with numbers in the form of like, uh, yeah, like science, engineering, mathematics, deals with numbers, but also deals with a lot of repetition. You're also not, in my experience, very client facing, very public facing. So if what you don't want to do is, uh, what's it say here? Form connections and build rapport. You're going to be a drone, bro. You're, you're, you're just going to be a robot punching numbers. And for that, we already have robots. Go into uh, data entry. How about that? Something light, something uh, computational. But as far as I know, you don't need a STEM degree to even start. Go to a temp agency. Typically, temp agencies, the more uh, the more reputable ones, temp agencies will go out in search of positions to be able to recruit individuals for uh, positions that aren't just entry level at fucking fast food or at, as a cashier, right? But they would require s- some, maybe minimal technical skill and might be paying slightly more than minimum wage. Possibly even, depending on the region where you live in, because we don't even know what country this person is in, possibly even cost of living. They might be paying a good livable wage. Now, it's nothing that you could, uh, I want to say, thrive under. If what you're seeking for is is uh, something to build and grow and thrive under. I mean, fam, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that working 
getting ahead and making something for yourself requires you to know, to go out, meet and know people, leverage your social network in order to elevate your fucking self net worth, your your own net worth, right? Now, it boggles my mind. It boggles my mind how this person, I'm, I'm thinking they're experiencing some kind of burnout. And again, they don't tell us uh, what subjects they teach. They don't tell us what years they teach what kind of institution they're at. They just say that they're a teacher and that they are now, uh, that they no longer have the passion for the job or that they might have a passion for the job, but maybe it's the, it's the environment that's hurting. That is it's hurting the possible connection to make between the instructor and the pupil, the, 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 the teacher and the student. Right. So, One, again, one has to wonder, and if I had them in front of me, I would give them this battery of questions pretty much to find, to find what it is, what it is exactly they do now, the skills that they have now, and which one of those are trans, are transferable or translatable into another field because they might not even want to take all of those skills with them. If this person is, is a a competent teacher, is a very capable teacher and yet they no longer want to teach in any capacity. They no longer want to teach in any capacity. Then they can't even be a leader. Then they can't even be a manager because being a manager, being a leader requires connection, requires rapport. And, and so what do they relegate themselves to then? Would it be entry level forever a position where they've got no opportunities to move up a position where they've got no opportunity to no room to move up no chance at improvement no chance to better themselves and they'll be entry level forever now I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with it because yeah we need cashiers we need burger flippers we need french fryers right? But if what this person wants is just to disconnect from the reality of what is society, and that is the search for improvement, if what they want to do is disconnect from that pursuit of improvement, they don't need to do that as a cashier. They could go back to being a cashier. The one idea I threw out there was data entry. I mean, that's basic entry-level computational work. This person doesn't want to be standing on their feet all day. Okay, I get it. They don't tell us their height and weight. They don't go into too much detail about the chronic pain. See, I'm not judging so much as I am, uh, as I am questioning, as I am inquiring. We need to know more about their circ. I would need to know more about their circumstances before I could give them some type of conclusive opinion. And that that comes with the territory of being a professional consultant, of being a career consultant. Now, this person wants to make moves. And from the outside, from what they're asking, from where I am standing, it sounds like they are <laughs> it sounds like they're asking for advice on how to move backwards, on how to move backwards which is they want to sacrifice whatever possible or, or potential uh, benefits they got through this teaching, through, through their time teaching. It could be that they got paid slightly higher. It could be that the hours were just from nine to five. Again, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of their current position. I know some folks say that teaching is a thankless job or other folks say that teaching is just from nine to five and, and you only work during the school month and you've got summer off. Again, there's pros and cons to, to this teaching profession. I get that. I understand that. What I'm saying is that this poster, this Redditor hasn't given us any of that context to go on. So if I had him in front of me, I would have to ask for more information. Now, there are, 
Now, I, I think data entry is, is, is just the best bet. That's the first one that came to my mind, given on the points that they list that they want to transition into, which was something dispassionate, something disconnected, something uh, repetitive and boring. And I myself have done data entry, and it is repetitive and boring. There may be a fire to have to put out every now and then, depending on exactly what it is that you do in data entry. But for the most part, you're just given a stack of papers. You're giving a you're given a bunch of computational data that you've got to input uh, into spreadsheets, into systems, into programs, in order to have those numbers be tabulated and then sent up to your manager. But they might never become manager if what they're saying here, they don't want to have to form connections or build rapport. If that rings true, if that's true, they don't have to worry about becoming a manager ever. I feel kind of bad for them because it doesn't sound like they'll move up that much higher in their career from entry level. And I don't know how much to today it varies the, the the salary for entry level for a data entry it all varies but i don't know if i don't know what their marital status is if they're single married divorced if they got kids again that that all comes back to fuel and inform what type of ambition this person has as a professional and from what I'm reading here, it sounds like they want to leave uh, professionalism behind, if that makes any sense. Like they don't want to be a professional. They want to become a worker. They want to become a worker bee, a drone. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm not judging. We need folks like that. We Society needs dependable drones. Society needs dependable cogs. In the wheels, while other people crank them, I mean, these wheels do need dependable cogs. They they need teeth that don't go dull. How about that? They, these these gears need teeth that do not go dull. And if this person wants to be a cog in the machine, by all means, do that. Do that. Uh, the first comment here. Let, let, let's read a couple. The first comment here says. I am a hospital security officer. It's 60,000 base with great benefits and OT. I usually do a little over 70K. The thing I like is the 12 hour shifts. I work three days a week. If I feel like it, I'll pick up a fourth day here and there. I was a truck driver and was never home. This is much better. A hospital security officer? Um. I think what this person is going to have to do is balance whether or not is is consider whether or not their pain, their excuse, what's it called? Their uh, they say their chronic pain and being on their feet all day will allow them to do that. Because as an entry level hospital security officer, as an entry level security officer, you're required to do rounds. I've I've worked for private security firms, and if you're entry level, if you just get in. With your basic guard card or an armed guard card, you still have to do rounds. You still have to stand a whole lot. You have to be on, but you're like roaming patrol, essentially. You're not just chilling in the office unless you're a dispatcher. You could be a dispatcher, but uh, there are moments when that could get tense too, especially in a hospital. You're dealing with all walks of life in a hospital. So Again, if this person doesn't want to connect, if this person doesn't want to be putting out fires, if this person here says that they cannot deal with the constant chaos of a school environment, you think they were going to want to deal with the with the intermittent chaos of a hospital environment? It, it's a, it's a whole it's a different kind of chaos in the hospital. So, I would probably write that off for them. Uh, something not to consider. Somebody else here is asking if they need any certificates to get that security officer job. And I just said, yes, they do. Uh, in the state that I was in, you actually have to apply to the state to be able to uh, carry a weapon, uh, to open carry a weapon. Uh, if you're an armed guard, you have to carry a, a specific certification. It's a, it's a card 
that is validated by the state, by the security, by, by the secretary of state. Uh, let's see here. Somebody else says, I work in radio and this post describes it well. I don't do anything off the clock. My hours are flexible and I love what I do. Not easy to learn at the start, but my current boss taught me everything I know and my work is a breeze now. They work in radio, they say. They work in radio. Hmm, let me see. Uh, an audio technician. Yeah, I could see that as an audio technician. But if, again, what this person does not want to do is have to connect and build rapport. They're, they're not, they, have, they don't have the capacity to be a personality on the radio, right? Um, oh, so somebody asked them a question. Yeah, I'm curious what you do. I'm going to school for broadcast journalism. And their reply is, I'm in talk radio. <laughs> I'm in talk. Yeah, no, th this person, the, the OP doesn't want to do any talking is what it sounds like. Maybe I'm being extremely cynical about it. I don't mean to bash, but yeah, I'm low key going to shit on this person because if they don't want to connect and or build rapport, what are they good for? If not just being a drone. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, a third person, a third commenter says, you're basically describing a typical government office job. There are many roles and most of them don't require any specific skill sets other than using a computer. Yeah, it sounds like data entry. Get into data entry. Uh, you would likely make more money in the private sector, but this person is suggesting a government office job. Yeah, I suppose you're going to take a cut in pay and the health benefits are going to be meh. But at least you'll be covered in the United States. At least you'll have the type of coverage that exempts you from getting hit by uh, those health insurance fees if you, uh, if you should choose to go without coverage, right? And uh, a commenter below that says, yeah, I agree. Most of the ones I've worked with had a very similar mindset for better for better or worse <laughs> and many really seem to enjoy the benefits and the predictability that comes with government work yeah because again i'm not shitting on government work we do need we do need some of these institutions to be running smoothly other institutions i believe we could do without or we could do with a reduction in in budgetary provisions in right if they if they took a slash in their budget i, I don't think much would change uh, aside from aside from upper management just becoming drones again and not letting that power get to their head because yeah i mean let's face it if you're dealing with bureaucrats they're uh, working for their office they're not working for the state they're not working for the country for the betterment of the country they're working to uh, keep their fucking job as a higher paid government employee. It just becomes a fucking power struggle. It's all fucking bullshit. It's, the, it's what the power of the desk does. It's what the power of the office does. It gets to somebody's head. And before you know it, they're fucking useless. But they think they are the most important. They're, they're, they're fucking... Uh, what, what's, the, what's the term called? They're... Um, yeah, they're essentially useless. But uh, they treat themselves as really important as the most important uh let's see here somebody else says you're asking a different question in the subject than you are in your post i mean i was gonna comment on that but i th i feel like the post uh the post gave us more context on the subject the subject is what is the best job for work-life balance and the post itself the post itself pretty much told us that what they want to do is not have to work. And I mean, it doesn't even sound like they have any passions in life. They just don't want to be passionate about to their work, right? They, they don't want to have to form connections and build rapport on the job. So shit, for all we know, this person could be a, a trust fund kid and uh, they don't, they just want to cut themselves off at a nine to five and then from five on, I don't know, maybe they have a personal hobby they want to engage in. Maybe they want to uh, start some kind of entrepreneurial endeavor that they're not giving us context for. We don't know. We don't know because 
well, we don't have the ability, the immediate ability to ask. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm reading off these comments because hopefully in the commentary, the OP returns and give us, you know, fleshes out their life circumstances a little bit more. So this person says, you're asking a different question in the subject than you are in your post. A good work-life balance isn't the same thing as a job where you can just go through the motions and get a paycheck. Uh, I think that commenter has it twisted. It Actually, it is. If what they want to do is just go through the motions and get a paycheck, that's the work-life balance that they seek. Let's see here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're asking a different question. Ba, 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 ba. The OP returns and says, yes, I realized that after and I can't edit the title after posting. Yeah, no, nah, I think I think you were just getting shit on because uh, because of your stance and also not having provided any more context and you're now returning to uh, to cover for it. And then they uh, the commenter actually replies to them and says, what which are you looking for? And they're actually a former teacher now in I.T. in information technology. So. I feel like uh they're looking for it says here that they're looking for the latter. They want to go through the motions and getting a paycheck. Shit, well that, that's what I said. Go into data entry. Data entry is like the start to that. The person before you in IT in IT you still need uh you, you need additional technical expertise, right? And that's going to put you that's going to edge you closer to the to STEM cuz you need to be uh, uh, like a data engineer, a, a, like a systems engineer essentially. To do IT effectively, to do IT effectively, you need a little background, a little background in engineering, the basics, right? And then you're in and you're essentially home free. Uh, Someone else says that they are a tech support from home. It's brain dead simple and you don't have to talk to anyone. You can text, chat, and email only. And when your shift is over, you're done for the day. So just log off and don't give it another thought until the next shift. They've been they've been a software developer and an academic, both paid better salaries but consumed way too much of their time and energy. They still make enough money to pay for a pretty nice two-bedroom apartment all to themselves in one of Canada's most expensive cities in Victoria. And they put savings away each month. They say, uh, I don't really need more than that at the cost of my time and happiness. Hmm. Tax support. I suppose you could do that. Um, I want to say that's a little tougher to get into because a lot of major companies, unless, unless you're, unless you are contracted with a, a company with, uh, I want to say with like nationalistic integrity, with national integrity, like if, if they want to keep the help within the country, otherwise it's going to be hard. I mean, I get that call center jobs, especially ones that are on commission, those typically tend to be in, in located inside of one's country because, I mean, to be honest, you want folks that are, are relatable, that are, you don't want to outsource a sales position to uh, somebody else overseas where even if they know uh, the technical specifications of whatever product they're selling, they they have greater difficulty connecting and relating to a client, to a, a consumer base, to, to, to your target demographic. They're going to have a, a harder time doing so. But tech support, tech support is going to be hit and miss. It's going to be hit or miss at times. Uh, given whatever industry you're going into, right? And, and that all depends. I've heard of some very successful companies that do that and then others uh, that will simply outsource whatever tech support component and, and or take contracts to do it for other companies. Um, I want to say that's that's hit or miss, but can still get the job done, right? Can still get the job done, especially if you're not having to speak with them directly if you can just send a text and hit send right if it's text chat and email only you're gonna have a, a greater degree 
of success as far as checking that box for uh, not having to <laughs> connect and build rapport with somebody. But uh, again, I, I think tech support could also lead to sales. So depending on what company you go into, tech support could re- tech support could be rolled into something else. So uh, all this to say, all this to say is that this person, this OP is going to have a uniquely difficult time getting away from the fact that business is always personal. Business is personal, right? What it sounds like this person wants is essentially uh, just to just to show up. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased now, but it sounds like this motherfucker, this person, wants some type of universal basic income. Like they just want to show up to somewhere, form a line somewhere, say hi, just give their name, and receive a fucking check, right? Otherwise, they they sound like they they don't want to provide a service. It sounds like they don't want to sell a product. Right, which are the two basic components of of capitalism, of of capitalizing on individual will, on on, on, the, on an individual's willpower. If if I'm trying to capitalize on my willpower, I have to be available to either sell a service, provide a service, or sell a product. Pro, you know, either either create some type of product or distribute some type of product. Uh, build some type of product that, but but it goes back to products and services and if this person doesn't want to do that they just want to show up they just want to show up for a fucking check they want to go through the motions and get a paycheck i think they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot when in reality what they should be is uh shooting themselves in the <laughs> If you enjoy this podcast, go ahead and follow the Instagram page. That's Corporate Cowboys. You'll recognize the profile pic. We're also on Patreon. It's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Uh, you can you can join any one of the tiers. They are available. Some of them are more exclusive than others. You can send us questions. You can provide us prompts for uh, either general podcast episodes or exclusive content exclusive podcast episodes where we answer questions and we go into uh added detail for certain topics um there are a couple of donation links floating around there's a cash app there's a paypal.me uh there is a a venmo also and yeah they're out there if you want to shoot us uh, a couple bucks a couple mil uh no just know that it's going to go towards business expenses and legal fees as they always do you know we got to buy office supplies and guns and knives and bullets you know have yourselves a great week oh proof of life i think i gave it already but today is saturday november 19 have yourselves a nice one until next time